what you're seeing on the screen here is an Excel-based hydrocyclone performance assessment template. It's, it's built to assess the classification efficiency of a hydrocyclone. Hydrocyclones are usually when, uh, used in the granite circuit of a processing plant with the primary focus to on separation of particles based on two physical parameters, which are the particle size and the particle density. Now, operationally, how do we measure the efficiency in terms of classification? Obviously, there are a couple of um, factors, uh, parameters affecting its performance. It could be the physical dimension of the cyclone itself, the apex diameter or the vortex finder diameter or the operational parameters like percent solids, throughput, and even the solid ST of the particle, the operational pressure of the cyclones, etc. But how do we measure in terms of efficiency of the hydrocyclone? Commonly, there are three parameters used to measure cyclone efficiency. One is the alpha value, which essentially is the measure of the cyclone's ability to retain coarse particles to the underflow stream. For operational efficiency, we would want our alpha value to range between two to three. Uh, another parameter is uh, D50, which is the particle size range uh, with, uh, not the range, but particle size fraction with the 50-50 chance of either reporting to the overflow stream or to the underflow stream. And the third parameter is the water recovery, which is a reflection of the cyclone's ability to return all the fine particles to the overflow stream. Ideally, a water recovery above 80% is ideal for operational efficiency. Other uh, parameters to look at is the recyclation load, the split ratio to the underflow, the PAT, which is essentially the targeted particle size for downstream processing, and we have a fine sort circuit portion. This is the portion of the feed that reports directly to the underflow without effective classification. Now on this sheet here, you can see this is the mass balance for the feed stream. This is for the overflow stream. This is the underflow stream. On the right are the mass balance chart the parity charts, it's basically a plot of the raw data against the balanced data and a line of best fit. On the bottom are the hydrocyclone performance chart. We have the particle size distribution, the partition curve also. And on the left is where you enter your physical uh, slurry uh, parameters or properties, the raw data. This is for the slurry properties, and this is where you enter the sizing data. On this next sheet here, this is where sizing balance is done. Uh, if you want to know the details about this uh, uh, analytical um, uh, analytical approach here, you can look up. Uh, detailed literature done by uh, Rob Morrison, uh, mass balance and flotation data. Everything is in there, everything is detailedly explained and simplified for understanding. It's, it's a good literature to read, so most all of these calculations are there, you can look it up. On this side is the Lynx model to assess uh, cyclone performance. And these are the parameters that we are after. The alpha water recovery and the short circuit portion. And the reduced efficiency, white and reduced efficiency plot here. This is to show the uh, fraction that is 
reporting directly to the underflow without um, effective classification. On the next sheet here is the mass balance. So basically we uh, did a node analysis approach. So this cyclone, an, an individual cyclone has uh, three nodes. One is the feed node, the underflow node and the overflow node. So for <coughs> node analysis, every in, input is taken as one and every output is uh, negative one. So this is for the node analysis. Uh, this is the matrix method used here. Uh, there's also a literature on it on the same page. Uh, a literature by Rob Morrison, you can look that up. So these are the equations in the background here. Okay, on this sheet here is the particle size distribution data. Uh, this is where we calculate uh, PAT for each stream. So everything is already set up. I'll just go through and um, input some raw data and we see how uh, it uh, responds. So this is the dashboard sheet. I'll just um, put in some raw data in. Okay. So these are our slurry properties. Now for the adjustment, it boils down to uh, personal preference. So essentially it's about the adjustment range. How, how much, uh, how that, the level of freedom you want to give to solver to make adjustments. So basically it's about the confidence level you have for each data point. So for feed throughput, I'll just put um, 0.1%. And for percent solids and SG, I'll put 5% for all of them. So that's basically a freedom range for solver to adjust this data within this uh, percentage of freedom. Meaning like for tons per hour for feed, the room is only 0.1%. It will adjust uh, plus or minus 0.1% of this value, it won't go beyond that. That's the freedom room to for it to adjust. Okay, for the sizing data, these are our raw data here. Okay, once you put everything here, I'll go over to the cyclone efficiency tab. So since all equations have been in, input already. Everything is calculated here. So this is the better value. Now, essentially, better value is the mass split of the feed to the underflow. So it's already balanced. This is the adjusted data here. So, so this is the better than um, mass split ratio to the underflow. This here we have all the balanced data, the new sizing data. And for the alpha values, I'll give them a new values, probably 1.78. This one I'll just put 70 or 75%. 106, I'll just put uh, probably 112. Okay, now we are using solver here to minimize this value. So I'll click on solver. Now solver, the objective is to minimize this cell, which is AA27. It will minimize this cell by changing these values to meet these criteria. So I will click on solve. Uh, it's 189, so let's see the a uh, small value it can go up to so now it's minimized down to 171 uh, it says solvers converts to the current solution all constraints are satisfied i'll just click on okay so sizing balance is done i'll go to mass balance 
Oh, uh, just have to equate this to the raw data submission. So just equate this one to the raw data here. So, yep, all the raw data are in. So this is the weighted sum of squares. I'll also use solver. Now, solver is set to minimize this value here. Minimize by changing this value here so that all of them is equals to zero. I'll just click on solve. Yep, let's find the solution. Yes, so I will accept solver solution or solver results. These values, I think the formatting is wrong. It's generally should be a number. Yep. Okay, and then let's look at the particle size distribution. Everything is already done. So this is the PAD for the overflow. I'm reading 31 microns. Uh, go back to the dashboard. This is the final result. We have a D50 of 105 microns. Water recovery is 79% and an alpha value of 1.78. This is the mass balance data and your position curve. So this this portion here, this portion is the bypass portion that reported to the underflow without effective classification. This section, it's, it's basically this percent here. This It's a representation of this. So looking at it, we would say the cyclone, the, its ability to classify cost particle to the underflow is not that, um, uh good it's less than two so the ability is low or poor and looking at the water recovery also it has a poor ability to retain fine particles to the overflow uh, it's just a quick way to analyze and measure the efficiency of a performing hydrocyclone now obviously they are to correct it to cite uh, set points you can look at the pressure operating pressure throughput uh, the feed density and all that this is just a quick tool to help you find a solution so i've also set in a, a vba operation to run all that we just did manually to run it in a VBA, so I'll just hide all this shit. Hide. Hide. We have to hide them because in the VBA code, I put in code that will unhide the sheets and run the solver. So if I click on the code, I'll just bring it to this window here. So as you can see, this um, this is the VBA code. And it says here it's sit cyclone efficiency visible to two minutes it's already uh, set to um, hidden. So this operation is here to make it visible before it will run the VBA solver. So for this one, all you can do is just uh, unhide it and then you just click on solver and it will run everything we just did here. So with this automation there, you just have to enter your raw data. I'll just enter these values here and just click on solver and it will run everything in the background and just show you the results here. If however, there's a error that the solver cannot find a solution that meets all the criteria, it will give you a prompt. I will just show you with a prompt here, view code. So yeah, if if solver if solver user finish equals true, then it will check this one message box. Solver can find a solution for mass balance. 
that if it can't find a solution, it, this message will pop up. Otherwise, if there's a solution, it will not pop up when you run this code. <clears throat> 